Assalamu alaikum. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Omar Saad, and in this video, I'm going to explain some drugs that we use for anemias. So, generally, when we talk about anemias, anemias is a very broad topic. We're talking about uh, different causes, um, but when we think about it, you can think generally related to the red blood cell size. Okay, that that is related to the mean corpuscular volume. If it's less than 80, that's microcytic. Between 80 to 99, that's normocytic, and above 100, that's macrocytic. Okay. But more specifically, um, especially regarding the management, so we can manage it or treat it, uh, we think about it related to the cause. Okay. So for example, there's plastic anemias related to issues in the bone marrow or production of the red blood cells. Those generally uh, can be related to the drugs, specifically chemotherapy. Um, also phenytoin is an anti seizure drug, famous for that. Also sideroblastic anemias deficiency, which relates to deficiency in B6, which is an important production of porphyrin which is basically uh, the heme without the iron. And regarding the iron, there's an iron deficiency anemia, which is very common one, probably the, uh, the most common dietary deficiency. And we have the hemolytic anemias related to things that destroy the red blood cells in the stream. Okay, so for example, malaria is a very common one. Also the anti-malaria drugs causes hemolytic anemia. Uh, also pernicious anemia, pernicious anemia related to uh, B12 or specifically the intrinsic factor which is important in the absorption of the B12. Okay, so let's start with the iron deficiency anemia. We know that um, heme has porphyrin, okay, and then it has the iron which binds to the oxygen. Now, usually in a normal circumstance, uh, when the red blood cell is destroyed, the body reuses the amino acids and also the iron. But if someone loses a lot of blood, okay. We're talking about hemorrhages or, for example, menstrual cycles. Okay, that will be an issue because we cannot retain that iron and we would have iron deficiency. Okay, we can't produce um, heme that contain iron uh, and combine to oxygen normally. So, usually we can give supplements. Okay, uh, those can be oral. Okay, those include the ferrous sulfate, the ferrous fumarate, and polysaccharide iron complexes. Usually those are different because of, for example, the regarding the cost, regarding the taste, for example, ferrous sulfate is the most used one, but issue is that it has some metallic taste. So they made the polysaccharide iron complex, for example, this one does not have a taste. Um, um, also, we can give the parenteal supplements, right? Those simply are irons bound to sugars, sucrose or dextran. When those are injected, for example, let's say the iron dextran is uh, consumed by the macrophages, okay, dextran is cleaved from the iron, and then iron in the ferric form will be released. Okay, for sucrose, it's generally, uh, it's related to a complex that later on, the iron will go directly to transferrin. Okay, what are the adverse effects of those drugs? Generally, GI distress. Okay, so we're talking about the area, we're talking about pain, but very famous, the, the, the ferrous sulfate, which is the most used one, it's famous for causing constipation of all GI problems. Okay, so constipation is an issue with the with the ferrous sulfate. We can generally avoid those by giving small doses and um, use uh, delayed release preparations. Also, regarding the parenteal the parenteal uh, preparations, the hypersensitivity also is an issue. But if it's so severe, those adverse effects, we can use iron chelating agents, diphenoxamine, which is an IV, or the tablets. Uh, different iron and also since we're talking about iron creating agents it's really important to mention that those are generally or mainly uh, for treatment of thalassemia in addition to the, the, the blood transfusion right which is a very very common hematological disorder in our region specifically okay now it's important to mention um, here we're giving the supplement right now in, in patients with kidney disorder you know that kidneys pr produce erythropoietin which is important for the protection of the blood cells now, patient with kidney disorder, specifically, uh, for example, chronic kidney disease uh, or, uh, or on hemodialysis, they're also given erythropoietin uh, supplements like erythropoietin alpha or darbopoietin, which is a uh, newer generation with more half-life. Now, the issue here is that you're increasing the, the number of the, or the production of red blood cells, but you're not giving uh, uh, the iron. So you have to also give the iron supplements with the erythropoietin supplements. Okay, as we said, there is oral or Parenteral uh, supplements for those. Okay, now we've got plastic anemias, generally referred to anemias related to the B9, the folic acid, or B12, the cobalamine. 
Okay, why those are important in the red blood cells? Well, because they play a very important role in the purine formation or the production of the purines in the DNAs. Now, you would ask, why is that important in the red blood cells? They don't even have nucleus. Well, before they uh, eject their nucleus, they produce a lot of purines so they can transcribe and translate hemoglobins. Okay, so it's important in the early stages in the hematopoietic stem cells. Okay. So, uh, as we said, that cobalamine and folic acid play an important role in the production of purines. So later on, they can produce their hemoglobin. And of course, that's important for a lot of cells, but here we're talking about red blood cells. Okay, so if there's deficiency in cobalamine or folic acid, that will be an issue. Now, how will uh, they be deficient? Generally, di dietary, it will not consume enough B12. Okay, or it's pernicious related to the intrinsic factor. You know, uh, B12 is consumed and then it's, uh, uh, it binds to intrinsic factors secreted by uh, parietal cells, okay, in the stomach, and later on it's absorbed in the ileum, distal ileum. Okay, so if you have an issue with uh, production of an intrinsic factor that's pernicious, or issue in absorption related to the ileum, let's say, uh, that those are the causes for deficiency of B12. Okay, how you treat those? Well, if it's uh, dietary, you just give B12. And if it's pernicious related to the intrinsic factor, we have intrinsic factor B12 complexes. And the nice thing is that B12, when you administer those, they don't have adverse effects. They barely have some, even if, even in high doses. About the folic acid, as we said, the same thing. Um, also, the deficiency is uh, related to the dietary, not consuming enough. But also, it's common. Uh, the deficiency of folic acid is uh, prominent in pregnancy because uh, it's needed a lot B12 during pregnancy. Also, to avoid the, the neural tube defects, that is an encephaly, spina bifida, we give a lot of supplements for folic acid to bring them uh, motors. Uh, a side note here that we use a lot of drugs in cancer, uh, you know that by now, um, to inhibit the dihydrofolate reductase, okay, methotrexate, trimethoprime, etc. But when we do that, we're affecting the normal cells, which normally they need uh, basically folic acid or uh, the dihydrofolate reductase to. Uh, reduce the folic acid to purines, to form purines. And now we have a drug, leucovirin, which is a nice drug that can simply put does not need dihydrofolate reductase or the reduction by this enzyme. So uh, it's usually treat, uh, useful or in the treatment of toxicities produced by methotrexate or methoprime. Uh, and since we're talking about uh, the, B, uh, the B vitamins deficiencies, We'll just mention the sideroblastic anemias. Basically, product, uh, we have deficiency in the vitamin B6, okay, of pyridoxine. Now, what can cause this deficiency? Why B6 specifically? Well, some drugs mainly, primarily, for example, isoniazide, it's so an anti, anti tuberculosis drug. So, when we give this drug, we also give supplements of B12 to avoid the sideroblastic anemias. The, the presentation of the megaloblastic, we have big red blood cells. This is a plastic usually they have uh, inclusions inside the cell, ring inclusions, uh, because they, they cannot proceed with the heme production. You know, B12 is really important in the, uh, the, the heme production. It has, it has part in the first step um, of heme production. Now, the last disease I'm going to talk about, uh, or the, its treatment, is basically sickle cell anemia. Uh, you know that sickle cell anemia is simply caused by a mutation. Uh, in a glutamate, in the sixth, uh, sixth position, transformed into valine amino acid. The, now, the phenotypical thing, when we see the red blood cell, it's normal which, when it's oxygen, oxygenated. Okay? But the moment it gets deoxygenated, it will have this sickle shape. Okay? And, it will, and that's somewhat good to uh, you know, avoid the, the infection by, for example, merozoites. Because you know, sickle cell anemia is very common in Africa. Uh, also happen to be um, um, an endemic place for malaria. And some people think that sickle cell uh, as a whole is a sort of adaptation to uh, the parasitic infection uh, of malaria. Now, the issue here is that, okay, good, um, very nice looking red blood cell and it's immune to merozoids. What's the deal? Well, actually because uh, those cells uh, lose their flexibility and they clump together. They can clump together and obscure small capillaries or arterioles, and that, and that, that can cause to uh, cause really serious, um, you know, complications. 
you're talking about obstructing the blood supply to the kidneys, the brain, um, the heart, etc. Okay, so what drugs do we have? Two drugs, hydroxyurea, okay, which does two things. It increases the production of uh, hem the fetal hemoglobin. The fetal hemoglobin has more affinity to the oxygen, so it will have, so you won't form the deoxygenated form easily. Okay, but you will say, okay, but we need the oxygen. Well, actually, we have another cells, normal cells, that can deliver the oxygen, no problem. But regarding those cells, uh, they will stick to the oxygen more, so they don't sickle. And also, they reduce the adhesion molecules, like L-selectin. Those, uh, those, those molecules are expressed in the cells, and uh, it makes them easier to uh, clump. Okay, so it reduces the, um, the expression of those uh, molecules. Another drug is pointoxifilin. Uh, simply put, this drug inhibits the uh, phosphodiesterase of the red blood cells, which generally increases the flexibility of red blood cells. It has a lot of intracellular uh, concept here. You just have to know that it, it inhibits the phosphodiesterase enzymes of the red blood cells and increases the flexibility of red blood cells. Okay. All right, so let's do one quick question. You have a 24-year-old uh, gravida one, para one, so she had uh, she will. She, she was pregnant once and she delivered. Woman presented to the emergency department after, after giving birth uh, for the first child. You know that by now. She lost a lot of, uh, of blood and the uh, gynecologist prescribed a first sulfate. Okay, first sulfate to increase her hemoglobin. What's the side effect of the medication? Uh, we know that first sulfate is an oral uh, supplement, right, for uh, emergency anemia. We give it usually. And the main side effect is GI distress, right? So, which of those are related to GI distress? That's constipation, diarrhea. None of those is related to GI distress. Not the hypercoagulability, hypertension, or seizures. Now, from those, which one um, did we say that it's the most common with this ferrous sulfate, which is the most used oral supplement for iron? It's the constipation. Okay. And that's simply it. Uh, thanks for watching. And, salam alaikum.